Iran's plans to survive and counteract U.S. and Israel massive SEAD operations. From state-of-the-art systems and endless air defense points to a vast interconnected air defense network and underground air defense bases. In recent years, Iran has built, mass-produced and operated a wide range of air defense systems. These systems such as Desfil, Zubin, Mersad-16, KH-3, KH-15, Talash, Tactical Sayyad, Bavar-373 and others are widely used and deployed in different parts of Iran. In addition, Iran also deploys Russian systems such as Tor or S-300 PMU-2. However, all of these systems have an inherent flaw, which is that they can be detected and destroyed in a short time by crews and anti-radiation missiles during airstrikes, when conducting suppression enemy air defense operations known as SEAD due to the excellent intelligence-gathering capabilities of the Americans, therefore, leaving Iran completely defenseless. Here, of course, Iran has devised an elaborate plan that employs several solutions simultaneously to preserve its valuable battlefield defenses and keep them operational. These solutions are as follows. 1. Over the past years, Iran has tried a lot to increase the mobility of its air defense systems, for example, the KH-3 system known as the killer of the American MQ-4 drone has the capability to be quickly deployed to a point become operational within three minutes, fire and quickly reposition itself, so leaving no chance for the enemy to target the system. This system is Iran's one of most potent and lethal air defense assets for ranges up to 105 kilometers and altitudes up to 27 kilometers. The upcoming new missiles of the system will cover a range of even up to 200 kilometers which is insane given the size of the system. 2. Iran is constantly making great efforts to increase the range of its air defense missiles while keeping the system very tactical at the same time. This increase in range naturally forces adversaries to operate outside the effective radius of such systems. One such system is Iran's Arman air defense system, still under development, with an incredible missile range of over 400 kilometers. There are also several other, as yet top secret, air defense systems that probably have an even longer range and are specifically designed to attack reconnaissance aircraft such as AWACS and logistical capabilities such as refueling tankers of adversaries. From what is known so far, such a system, called HODA, can reach ranges of about 700 kilometers. A perfect system for large targets operating far from Iranian borders. The HODA system uses missiles that are derivatives of the Fateh surface-to-surface -surface ballistic missile, as shown in the figure. 3. Iran has attempted to mount all components of its powerful short- and medium-range systems on a single truck. Unlike a system such as Russia's S-300, which consists of various components mounted on multiple trucks, Iran's Syed Tactical Air Defense System, for example, has placed all components of detection tracking, and firing systems on a single truck, which will greatly benefit the system's high mobility and durability. The same is true for the KH-3 system. The Syed Tactical Air Defense System, as its name suggests, is highly tactical and off-road and can be easily connected to Iran's vast air defense network. 4. A strength of Iran's air defense is that all systems can be interconnected and the data obtained from these systems can be forwarded to the air defense headquarters network and redistributed. In this way, data from different systems are shared and the best decisions can be made in a short time. Therefore, Iranian air defense systems benefit from data fusion through a strong and comprehensive air defense network. 5. Iran has greatly expanded the number of its defense points in Iran. In other words, Iran currently has more than 4,000 air defense points, and of course, destroying all of these points will take weeks and months and will make the operation to suppress air defenses very complicated and most likely unsuccessful. 6. In recent years, Iran has also moved to passive systems, which are systems that do not emit electromagnetic waves and are very difficult if not impossible, to detect. 
The CIA's U.S. RQ-170 drone that entered Iranian airspace from Afghanistan in 2011 was actually detected by such passive systems and forced to land safely. Iran's electro-optical systems have a range of 100 to 300 kilometers, allowing Iran to detect the movements of its enemies while being invisible the enemy. In the field of passive detection, Iran has now managed to create excellent structures and equipments that are extremely complex and modern. Iran is able to detect any signal from 0.2 to 40 gigahertz and even signals below the noise line using some advanced techniques that reflect the strength of Iran's detection capabilities. Iran has developed a range of sensors, to which audio sensors will be added in the near future, to further enhance detection capabilities to counter any SCAD efforts. 7. Iran has invested heavily in the area of electronic warfare and disruption of its enemy's military systems in recent years. Complete disruption of communications or widespread disruption of enemy systems can cause the collapse of SEAD operations. Such electronic warfare operations can be conducted from the ground as well as from the air with large numbers of drones and fighter jets. This has been practiced in numerous military exercises in recent years. Iran has created advanced systems not only in the field of electronic warfare and electronic countermeasures, but also in the field of electronic counter-countermeasures in its air defense systems, rendering the enemy's electronic warfare attack ineffective to useless. Electronic counter-countermeasures is a part of electronic warfare which includes a variety of practices which attempt to reduce or eliminate the effect of electronic countermeasures on electronic sensors. 8. Large-scale use of high-flying drones equipped with multiple sensors to detect and even engage threats such as small cross-section enemy drones specifically designed to destroy air defense systems. Iranian air defense forces therefore have both airborne and ground-based defense platforms, which further complicates SCAD operations, as airborne platforms can easily create obstacles to a smooth SCAD operation. 9. One of the cornerstones of Iran's plan to protect its air defense systems from U.S. missile and air strikes is to move the air defense systems to underground or subterranean defense bases. Iran has created underground tunnels and bases for its air defense systems, like very well-known missile or drone sites or underground air bases, like the Eagle 44 that Iran unveiled some time ago. These bases will provide Iran a good and lasting protection. They will be key when it comes to air defense system durability on the battlefield. These underground tunnels will simply be such that the systems will drive out, go to the considered locations, fire, and then return to the tunnels. Photos and videos of these bases have just been officially released. These underground air defense bases can be very complex and extensive. Air defense systems are also reloaded in these bases. By building underground air defense bases, Iran has taken the initiative away from the Americans and set the possibility of destruction and penetration of Iranian soil close to zero. In effect, Iran has locked up its enemies with this tactic. It is also possible that Iran will place its defensive weapons in underground tunnels and fire them from there. By doing so, it will not be necessary to leave the tunnels at all. 10. Iran's other solution to prevent the SEAD operation has been to continuously increase its offensive power by carrying out missile attacks on American and Israeli bases and other critical points. In other words, Iran has been continuously increasing its offensive power to disable the American war machine, an example of which was the unveiling of missile magazine system with capability of firing hundreds of missiles in a very short period of time from various parts of Iran. 11. Ultimately, Iran has the advantage of having large land areas, so SCAD operations will naturally take a lot of time to conduct, which is absolutely an impediment, as the Iranians will respond devastatingly. So, in the end, it will be a highly risky and costly operation. Based on the experience of the last decade, foreign forces have entered Iranian airspace, but they have never returned. Thanks for watching and see you next time.